Did you ever wonder why we use HTTPS instead of HTTP? Do you know how the HTTPS protocol works? And how about full automation of all the tasks related to HTTPS keys and certificates? All communication that occurs over HTTP is happening in plain text. As a result, such communication can be easily sniffed. Somebody can relatively easily find out what is the information flowing between a client and a server. So, in a most simplistic way, here's how it works. We have a client, let's say a laptop, that goes to a DNS server and asks, Something like, hey, where is sillydemo.com or any other domain? And the DNS server responds with an IP, like 167.23 and so on and so forth. Now, with that IP, the client forwards, actually sends a request to the destination because that's the destination server or that's the destination load balancer that balances request to the server. But for the sake of simplicity, let's say that that's the IP of the server and then the server responds with something. Hey, this is a silly demo application, shows you something in browser or sends a request or does something, responds. Now, there are two major issues with that or two major questions that we need to respond. First, how do we know that the destination service is indeed the correct one? How do we know that when I say sillydemo.com, we actually went to the server behind that domain instead of some random server somewhere else? Maybe something is redirecting our requests or God knows what. Anyways, how do we know that we are going to the right place and if we are going to the right place, how do we know that no one is sniffing, <laughs> sniffing the information going from and to the destination service? How do we know that somebody is not listening to our conversation? Now, the short version to those two questions is actually not the version. The short answer to those two questions is HTTPS or HTTP VTLS. It has two major, two main objectives. First is authentication, confirmation of the website's or server's identity. And the second is encryption. HTTPS uses an encryption protocol to encrypt communication. I will explain that protocol in a second. And for now, what matters is that the protocol itself is called Transport Layer Security or TLS, which was formerly uh, also known as Secure Sockets Layer or SSL. Now, what matters here is that when we combine HTTP with TLS, we get HTTPS. Now, the keys that are required to encrypt the communication are split between two parties. There is a private key. That key is controlled by the owner of a service and it is kept private always. That's the key that never, ever, ever leaves the server. That key is used to decrypt information encrypted by the public key. And the public key is available to everyone who wants to interact with that specific service in a way that is secure. So information that's encrypted by the public key can only be decrypted by the private key. In other words, I can request public key from any server in the world uh, and they will give it to me because with public key, I cannot decrypt messages, but I can encrypt them. Only the destination, the owner of the private key can decrypt them. Now, that might be confusing, so let me show you all that with the diagram. So, we have a client that goes to some server and says, hey, I would like to talk HTTPS with you. That's the language I would like to speak, or to be more precise, I can speak any language, but that's the protocol I want to use when talking to you. And the server says, okay, that's that's perfectly fine. We can talk HTTPS. Here is my public key. Take it. It's yours. Do anything you want with it. Now, the client takes that public key, creates a session key, the key that will be used for the session, the communication between those two endpoints, and it encrypts the session key with the public key and then we have encrypted version of that session key. Remember, 
it can be encrypted with the public key, but it cannot be decrypted. So nobody, even the client, cannot decrypt that session key. Only the server that has the private key can do that. So the client sends the session key, the encrypted version of the session key, back to the, not back, but to the server. So until this moment, only the client had that session key. Now the client has the session key and the server has the encrypted version of the session key. But since that session key was encrypted with the public key and only the private key can decrypt it, uh, the server uses that combination, uses the private key to decrypt the session key. And now the server has that session key as well. So at this moment, both the client and the server has the same keys and those keys were transferred over the network but nobody could sniff them out because the session key was encrypted and only the private key could decrypt it and here comes the joy here is where it really really starts from now on both endpoints can encrypt the information using that session key and from there on they talk in encrypted format. I send you encrypted message, you decrypt it, and then I send you the encrypted, another encrypted message and you decrypt it and so on and so forth. Now, that process explains encryption and it answers one of the two questions. It doesn't answer the other one, the other question. How do we know that the destination we speak with is indeed the one and only the one we should talk to. Maybe somebody is redirecting our request to some other destination. And the answer to that question lies in certificates. And certificates can be, generally speaking, self-signed. Don't. Please don't do it. Do it. Never, never, ever, ever, ever self-sign your certificates unless you absolutely must. Because clients consuming self-signed certificates have no way to trust them without already having the certificates beforehand. That means that everybody has certificates, which is kind of silly. And also it becomes very hard to manage the system with self-signed certificates and it's less secure than just don't do it. What you should be doing is to sign your certificates with trusted certificate authority or CA. Now that certificate authority can be hosted by you. It can be a service. Uh, if you can use the service, don't bother with self-hosting certificates. Anyway, um, yeah, there are also issues, right? So those certificates authorities uh, can be many, right? You could be managing it yourself with HashiCorp Fault. You could be using a service like Venafi. You could be using a service like Let's Encrypt and so on and so forth. So if you're still confused how that works, let me illustrate it. We have a client and we have a server and the client sends a request to the server and the server responds with public key, right? That's what we learned before. Now comes the tricky part, right? The client before continuing the communication can go to certificate authority and certificate is part of that key and ask a question like, does this public key really, really, really belong uh, to that domain, to that address, and certificate authority hopefully responds with yes. And then the client knows, okay, that's really the destination I should be talking to. Let me establish the communication. The rest is the encryption diagram I previously explained or shown. And now comes the question of uh, automation. I promise that I will show you how to automate all that because we need keys, we need certificates, we need to renew those all the time, not all the time, but uh, periodically and so on and so forth. So let's see how we can automate all this so that it becomes hands-off experience. But before we do that, let me show you an application that is not using HTTPS just to be clear how that looks like and what is it that you should never be doing. So I'm using Kubernetes. Everybody knows that I like Kubernetes, but even though I am using Kubernetes, logic is the same no matter which platform you're using. But since it's Kubernetes, I'm having ingress resource that essentially says, hey, uh, there are certain rules for HTTP communication and the host is what really matters here that says, host is app.sillydemo.com and I want, if possible, if you're nice enough to use TLS uh, and the host for TLS is the same as the host for HTTP, which is app.sillydemo and 
the secret with the certificate name is a silly demo. So that's where you will find certificate if I ever bother creating it. So let me deploy my application. It includes that ingress by executing kubectl namespaces production. I want to apply whatever is in the directory app and all my resources, including ingress, were created. Now, let me stop here for a second and let you know that uh, there is a gist with all the commands and the setup. If you want to reproduce, it's easy to copy paste from there and the link to the gist is in the description, as always. Now, let's see what happens if I open this, the address that host in my browser, I'm going to open HTTP, the colon, slash, slash, etc., etc., abpclydemo.com, and uh, the website responds, even though it shouldn't, I should probably configure my ingress to either redirect HTTP request to HTTPS or to deny HTTP altogether, but I want to show you first how it works without TLS, and that's it. The browser complains and says, hey, well, what the heck are you doing? This is HTTP, this is insecure, you should not be doing this. But what can I say? It works, but it shouldn't. So don't do this, right? This is just the first step. Now let's enable HTTPS access uh, through a two few tools that we will use, actually one tool and one service. So, um, I will use one tool and one service. I will use Let's Encrypt to give me uh, the keys, the certificates, everything I need for secure access. And I will use Cert Manager, which will manage those certificates and renewal of those certificates and so on and so forth, right? So, Let's Encrypt is a service and Cert Manager is something running in my cluster and communicating with that service and getting whatever is needed to get. Now, don't freak out and say, oh, I don't want to use Let's Encrypt. I like Let's Encrypt. Uh, if you don't like, you can use Cert Manager with quite a few other issuers. Uh, I think that there are, there, there's quite a number of issuers supported. So think of this, not as Victor says, everybody must use Let's Encrypt. Victor is only saying everybody must use Cert Manager because it's awesome. Uh, but the issuer can be anything, including Let's Encrypt. Now let me go back to the browser and uh, open HTTPS version of my application. And you can see the message, terrible message saying, your connection is not private. Do not do this, please, please, please. I mean, you can proceed to that website, but you shouldn't because certificate was not validated or there wasn't certificate, something fishy is going on. And of course that something fishy is going on because I did not yet configure uh, Let's Encrypt. Actually, I did not yet uh, run or apply Cert Manager, which will do the dance with Let's Encrypt. So let's do that next. Now with Cert Manager, there are two components that we need to think about. There is the issuer or cluster issuer. The difference is whether it's namespace scoped or cluster scoped. Uh, I'm using cluster issuer today. And over there, information about the issuer that we want to use, right? I'm using Let's Encrypt. So uh, there is the address of the Let's Encrypt server. There is email so that Let's Encrypt can notify me if there is an issue uh, with the renewal of my certificates. There is the a secret where the private key, you remember the one that we may, I mentioned before? Now there is a secret where the private key will be stored and there are solvers, and in this case, I'm saying, hey, selector is nothing, meaning that this should work for any domain in my cluster, and the ingress class is traffic. So that will take care of the keys, the private key, the public key, and uh, I can, all I have to do is just to apply that uh, manifest and say kubectl apply file name is issuer.yaml. Now that solves the encryption problem, but it doesn't solve the certificate problem, uh, so I will request a certificate for that specific subdomain. And all I need is in certificate YAML. And over there I'm saying, hey, the certificate should be in the secret called silly demo. And the issuer that should get you that certificate is called production. And the common name and the DNS name are the same. They're app.sillydemo.com. So that's the domain uh, that you should use to get the certificate and confirm that I I am indeed I, and then it's a job, it will be a job later on of Let's Encrypt to figure out whether I am really I or I am somebody else. 
Uh, I'm not going to go into details how it figures that out. Uh, there are actually quite a few ways to do it. And what else? Yeah, well, let's just apply that. Let's apply that certificate. By executing kubectl namespaces production, I want to apply whatever is defined in certificate.yaml. And that's about it, you would think. But no, there is one more thing. There is one more thing missing. I need to modify my ingress and tell it to use the issuer um, I just uh, applied. So let me go back to the ingress and do that. This part is fairly simple. All I have to do is add additional label so that cert manager knows that uh, that's the ingress and uh, what she should do with the ingress and so on and so forth. To be more precise, since there can be multiple issuers, I need to tell which ingress is associated with which issuer. Uh, there can be one or more ingresses associated with each issuer. So I'm going to say, say the label is cert-manager.io slash cluster issuer, because I'm using cluster issuer, it's called production. Uh, that's, the one, that's, the, that's the one associated with this ingress. So let me reapply the manifest of my application. And that's about it. From now on, I would I probably don't need to do anything. Uh, the certificates for this application will be generated. It will, they will be renewed periodically and so on and so forth. This should be it, right? Let, let me double check. Let me go back to the browser and refresh it. You know, the one that was failing big time, complaining about my certificates. And now if I refresh the browser, everything is working. HTTPS is there. My domain was validated, verified. Uh, the client can confirm that I am indeed I and uh, the communication is through TLS and all the good things, right? And it was extremely easy, right? There is no excuse for anybody not to use HTTPS, unless you're in some weird situation, then let, let me skip the weird situation and say there is no excuse not to use HTTPS. It helps a lot. It makes things much more secured and it's uh, looking in fruit, right? There is almost no effort involved. You have no excuse not to use HTTPS for your applications and especially now that you know how easy it is. Right, so use cert manager if you're using Kubernetes and combine it with issuers like Let's Encrypt or one of the many other supported by Let's Encrypt. Thank you so much for watching. No, actually, no, no, I'm not gonna thank you yet. Uh, let me know in the comments what are you using? Are you are you securing all the communication through HTTP and TLS? And if you are, how are you managing the certificates and which authority are you using for your certificates? I'd like to know. Maybe it's not cert manager, maybe it's not Let's Encrypt. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.